For more debates, updates and bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. Correct me if I'm wrong, Graham, right? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think you're saying that the arguments leave it open, that it's rational be per- rationally permissible to be either one or the other, a theist or an atheist. Um, and, and I'm curious if you think that this rational permissibility comes straight from the arguments or, it, or does it come from perhaps a mix of like arguments and uh, a, a conversion story like mine? Like, w- Would you say that the experience also contributes to make it permissible, like that it is not an irrational decision to make? That's sort of a thing. What do you think? So I think you've characterized my view pretty accurately. So I think that um, the, the arguments are just on both sides. Add them up, find the best arguments you can. They're not compelling. So that is, they don't compel people to arrive at a particular position. The arguments just aren't strong enough. Uh, I do think, I mean, this will speak to part of what you said. There, there, I've read quite a few sort of autobiographical sketches by contemporary Christian philosophers. There's a couple of books um, uh, that came out in the 80s and 90s where um, lots of philosophers of religion in North America kind of told the, a little bit of their life story. And it turns out that quite a few of those philosophers claim never to have had a religious experience, right? They're Christian philosophers, but they kind of regret the fact that they never had anything like Pascal's Night of Fire or even anything um, sort of remotely like that. And so I'm, I'm inclined to think that sort of you don't need the experiential foundation in order for it to be rational for you to be a Christian. The kind of considerations that you might put together as a purely intellectual case, it seems like that can be enough. So the kind of people I've got in mind, I'm pretty sure that Bill Alston was one person, and I suspect maybe that Alvin Plantinger is another. Maybe I'm not remembering the details quite correctly. But I think that he also said that he'd never had anything like like that. I mean, of course... Religious experience might mean other things. It might mean like going to church and joining in the singing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something that's the kind of thing that in the in the kind of his, in the historical record in the literature is the kind of thing that might lead sort of pretty directly to conversion, something like that. Yeah. So, so in terms of justifying Christian belief, right, on ma- making it rationally permissible, uh, so. You're, you're open to saying that uh, the arguments could do some of that, uh, that an experience could do some of that as well, presumably. Like, neither sounds like it's strictly necessary, but they could separately justify Christian belief in the, along the lines that you suggest. Yeah, so I think that you could be a Christian and think that the foundation of your belief really lies in these amazing experiences that you had, or you could be a Christian and think, actually, you know, when I weighed up all of the considerations, my judgment was that this was where the truth lies, and either of those could work. 